Hi, Sue. Hello. Thanks so much for taking the time to have a chat with me today about the, uh, this, this exciting new venture called the Integrated Care Academy. Can I ask you to introduce yourself first, please? Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm Sue Cook. I'm the Executive Director for People Services for Suffolk County Council. So for those who don't really know what that means, it means that the County Council services to do with people, public health, you know, anything to do with people, public health, adult services or children's services, um, I'm responsible for. Perfect role for this interview. Thank you. <laughs> so, Sue, um, this, this, uh, this venture, why are you so passionately involved in this? So as a, as a county council, um, and as an individual really, but as a county, you know, on, per, on a personal level, I'm very passionate about um, designing the way we uh, deliver to the people we're here to serve in a way that makes sense to them, not makes sense to the organisations. And, tr and, and that's true for the county council too. Um, we're, we're, we're wanting to do anything we can to redesign what we do, to make sure that people receive a service that meets their needs and isn't defined by the historical ways in which we used to do things. So, for example, well, not for, you know, people in traditionally what happened is that um, we individually, whether it be health, whether it be care, whether it be the voluntary community sector to a degree, there are more, um, they tend to develop services a bit more that um, nearer, closer to the ground. But wh whoever it might be, as a partner, over we've developed services that, to some degree, um, uh, in a silo, um, designing and delivering without talking a lot to the people who receive services, but also without talking a lot to our partners. This is, you know, years ago, but it's developed over a long time. And um, at, to some extent, those services have reflected the needs of the organisations rather than the needs of the people that we're here to serve. Um, and I, I give an example sometimes of my mum who had two strokes and she came out of hospital, um, the first stroke, and she had, it wasn't in our area, it wasn't in our area, it's a different part of the country, but she had two completely different teams providing the same service essentially a kind of rehab reablement type of service um and and it just doesn't make any sense to her it doesn't make any sense to her she can't because she's quite affected by her cognitive abilities quite affected by the stretch she can't understand who's this person who's that person who has to you know it's just very complicated um and so We've developed our services traditionally in silo and designed them in silo without much conversation with the people of how they experience it. And this was an opportunity to rethink that and to, um, to start from the person's experience of services and work out how we over time integrate and redesign our services to make them feel and make sense and also have more impact for the people that we serve. Thank you for making it a, both a, a, an organisational and a, a personal reflection on that, uh, to that question. Uh, and, and a good segue, thank you, that last bit about impact to, to my next question, which is, so who, who will benefit? Uh, why, when, where and how? Because of course this, uh, this massive enterprise won't hit the ground running um, so it's going to take time for certain aspects of it to to uh, uh, make an impact. So what do you think about that? Um, I think primarily the primary purpose is to benefit the people that we're here to serve. That's the primary purpose. So as I say, they experience services that are more integrated, that are more coordinated, where they're more involved in and uh, in designing and producing services, but not only on an organizational, like a, uh, but on a personal level. So they're more, they have more say over the care they get. Um, and they have more say over the care plan and they have more influence and it's less organizationally driven and more individually driven. Um, so ultimately that's why we're doing it. Um, 
but I think the workforce will develop and benefit tremendously over time. I think in Suffolk, we're in a very different place than lots of places. We work very well together. We seek to understand each other. We seek to understand what we're aims are. We seek to find common ground. We seek to um, find a common goal. And many of our systems and teams and local systems and have got to a point where their conversation is about how do we put the person at the heart of what we do. They have got to that place, which is absolutely fantastic. So it will help them in terms of empowering them to be able to change, to do things differently, knowing that they're supported um, and helped and trained and um, have an opportunity to reflect on the changes that they think are needed. So I, I think it's really important that um, our staff and our frontline practitioners, our team managers, they sorry about that. <laughs> I think it's really important. I'll start again. <laughs> I think it's really important that our staff and our team managers and the people who come in contact with the people who use our services are empowered and I don't, you know, are empowered to make change for people and to make change organisationally because they for two reasons really because they see what's going on they know what the experiences of people are like they can see where the problems are they know what we need to change to make it smoother or more seamless or um for that person they sometimes don't have the power to do that so this i'm hoping will give people the training the confidence the permission the environment or support what we've already started to grow to make the changes and the second reason is that the people who experience our services they don't see me they don't see you they don't see any of our the senior partners in the system they don't they don't that isn't their experience of our services the experience of our services and what we're here for is the person they come into contact with so that person that they come up contact with needs to be able to be the very best they can be for them and feel as confident as they can about changing things to meet their needs um, because that's the person they experience um, in the service so i'm hoping that the academy will give us a sense of confidence and um, uh, support for taking some risks and making different decisions about how we deliver for people. Well, right. You need authority, don't you? And, and you want the, the reach to, to for, for the intentions to reach every single person that works within the system. Absolutely. And they need to feel like they're an advocate for that person they they have the you know the right to do their job that's why they came into this work they didn't come into this work to tick boxes and fill in forms they came into this work to make a change for the people who are here and sometimes they become because of how we've developed services over many years sometimes they become um quite worn down by the barriers um for the people and they don't feel that they can remove them and i think this will give people permission to to remove some of those barriers Fantastic. Like creative brilliant thank you sue well said i'll i'll uh, say thank you you're very welcome <laughs>